This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. Spirit of the Lord is upon me. His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me. And He's calling me to the heavenly. Be seated in heavenly places, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. To be walking in His favor and grace, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. Oh, yeah. Good morning, Tallahassee. You are listening to Wave 94.1. We're here with Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ, Escape to Heaven. How are we going to do it? Well, Servant Marcia is going to help us understand. And happy holidays. We're trying to figure out how do we escape from all that we're dealing with so that we can be happy, so that we can be filled with cheer and joy and the strength of the Lord. How do we do this? Well, we need to escape. But in order to escape, we need to believe that someone can help us escape. I'm here to tell you about a Savior, a God, a Father that loves you so much that He will make sure that you be delivered and that you are empowered and able to escape. So we're going to start right now. What does it mean to be delivered by God? Amen. So if I'm delivered, we're talking about a God that rescue, saves his people from difficult and dangerous situation. We saw the Lord do that many times in the Bible. One of the um, examples of deliverance in the Bible is when God rescued his own people uh, from physical damage, such as he did with the Israelites when they were in slavery uh, in Egypt. And then he delivered Daniel from the lion's den. Uh, there's also such a thing as deliverance from spiritual danger. Uh, God delivered the Israelites from idolatry and the false gods of Egypt, and he delivered Peter even after uh, he denied Jesus. Amen. So our God is able to intervene into our lives to save us from the dangers of sin and false belief. God will also deliver you from the power of of sin. The Bible teaches us that all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. That's over there in Romans, the third chapter, and that the wages of sin is death. That's in Romans, the sixth chapter. However, the Father has sent his only Son to be a way to deliver us from sin. Amen. And um, the good thing about God as God made a prophetic word, he actually stated it over in Genesis, the third chapter, when he was dealing with the fall of Adam and Eve, and he, he was talking with uh, Eve about, how did you do this? And Eve said, well, the serpent beguiled me. And at the end of it all, God gave consequences to all three parties, okay? To Eve, uh, there would be more pain and uh, in her delivering process of birthing. Uh, with Adam, he said that the ground is afflicted or cursed for your sake. And with the serpent, he indicated that the seed of the woman would overcome the seed of the serpent. So that let us know that we have a real enemy. <laughs> yeah, you think that uh, something's wrong with you? Not much is wrong with you other than the fact that you inherited the DNA of Adam and Eve. So, of course, you have an inclination towards sin and separation from God. But God, the Father, this awesome Father, this... Uh, the father of all spirits, the father of our being, the creator. He also created a path for you and I to be delivered, to, for us to escape from the uh, decisions that were made by Adam and Eve. Uh, the Lord himself rescues us from the fear of death. Uh, Jesus himself said that I am the resurrection and the life he who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. So we have been given 
a promise that delivers us even from the fear of death. Even, you know, there's in the Bible where it talks about the spirit of adoption that uh, we are, we have been delivered from fear, but instead we have, uh, we've been adopted. And so we have many promises of God delivering us. And I'm here to tell you and I, let's try to believe that God will really save us and deliver us because it is written that at the name of Jesus, how, how will he do this? That's another question. The, the odds uh, seem to be so, so big, um, even in daily living. If you're in business, it's difficult to now stay in business. If you have uh, children, it's difficult to raise them so that they can even stay alive long enough to fulfill your dreams. Um, and just if you're elderly, there's always the threat that you go outside and you may not make it back in. So we're all kind of living under this umbrella of the impossibility of staying alive daily. However, God did figure out a way. And the Bible tells us um, in Philippians, it talks about how at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow of those in heaven, those in earth and under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So there is a way that God himself will ensure that we can all be delivered and escape through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we receive the Holy Spirit which dwells in us and gives us power, okay, over the enemy. It's written in the Bible in 1 John 4, it says, You dear children, once we become that new creature, are from God, and we've overcome them, them being the nebulous they that are standing against everything that you're striving to do, that you know God himself has empowered you to do. But you have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. I'm here to tell you, saints of God, that we can really believe that we have the power, the authority, and the ability to escape from the woes of this world. We may not be strong enough. Uh, I know there's this song that say, or maybe it's in the Bible, where it talks about let the weak say that they're weak. Uh, but uh, because why? The Lord is strong. Amen. So we put all of our faith and our hopes and our dreams in the power of the Lord. But there was a uh, race, uh, the same people that God selected, the same people that God spoke of prophetically, that deliverance would come through for all mankind, the Israelites. And even though God chose them, like you and I, they did not want to be chosen. They wanted to live their lives as they understood. You and I do the very same thing, but God still delivered them. Let's look at Psalms, the 78th chapter. And in that chapter, what we see is that the Lord, he did so much, right? He uh, He split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them water. He brought streams out of the rocks and caused water to run down like rivers. Um, I'm reading from the Bible. You're, you're welcome to go to Psalms, 78 chapter. Um, no matter what he did, he divided the sea and caused them to pass through. He made the waters uh, stand up like a heap in the daytime. He led them with the cloud. Um, and all night, he led them with a, a light of fire. Um, he, he struck the water uh, so that waters gushed out and streamed. He gave them bread. He also gave them meat. But no matter what they did, no matter what God did for them, they would not believe in this great God. They still refused to be obedient to the way of life that he had given to them so that they could shine, you know, uh, separately from the rest of the world. God's intent is not just to save the Israelites. He wants to save all of us, the Gentiles, you, me, the mixed, whatever, anything that have his image, God is trying his best. He is doing all to save us all. 
And the reason why you'll see him protecting uh, the Israelites so much is because of the prophetic word that he spoke in Genesis. He spoke his purpose towards mankind when he said that her seed would bruise, you know, uh, your head and so forth as he spoke to the serpent, meaning that he will reunite us back with his original intent when he created uh, mankind and created the Garden of Eden for, for them to rule from. The Lord has never removed himself from what he intended to do for mankind. If we go back to Psalms, the 78th chapter, we'll see the Lord sent them angel food. That's deliverance. He delivered them so that they would not die of starvation. Uh, he rained rain on them like dust. Uh, he made sure that they ate quail, okay? Um, and in spite of all this, they still sinned. They did not believe him. They did not believe his, his wondrous works, um, no matter what he did. So are you going to be like that? Knowing that God has delivered you from so much, are you going to believe that your deliverance is real, that God is real? Even here, I'm looking still in Psalms uh, 78 chapter, and this is uh, verse number 40. I think I'll go to verse number 50, how he made a path for his anger because why? They didn't believe him. And um, he did this with the Egyptians, but he destroyed all the firstborn. He made his own people to come forth like sheep. He guided them in the wilderness, led them to safety. But the sea overcame and overwhelmed their enemies. God will do the same with you. Your enemies cannot survive <laughs> against you. I've had situations where people have gone against me, and years later, a couple of years later, the Lord reverses. If you're fighting some kind of legal battle that you know is unfair, and you know that you've been doing the work of the Lord, don't give up because God will still prevail in your life. He still will do it. Um, and so, but, but are you going to be like the Israelites where no matter what God does, no matter how much he deliver you, you still don't believe because that's what it says in the Psalm 78, the 56 verse, how they tested and provoked the most high God and still refused to keep his testimonies and they turned their back and acted unfaithfully like their fathers. I don't want to be like that. What I want to do, I'm hoping that you're desiring the same thing, that we can be faithful, that we can be appreciative, that we can uh, thank the Lord for deliverance and still walk in uh, the power of his salvation. That's what I'm hoping uh, that you do. I'm hoping that I do the same thing. Because if not, then we we will, instead of facing the deliverance of God, we would end up facing the wrath of God. I don't want that. I was looking at deliverance and say, well, Lord, what's some of the, the verses in the Bible on deliverance? And, and the main one is uh, the Spirit of the Lord. So once you become a new creature, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, like Jesus, right? Because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that arose to preach the favorable year of the Lord. That's what you and I have been empowered to do once the Lord himself has delivered us. He then anoints us with the reconciliation ministry so that we can actively reconcile the lost souls to uh, the kingdom of the Lord. Amen. Uh, and then he empowers us when he delivers us, like the weapons. He gives us weapons. They're not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and any high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That's the weapon that God gives us, weapons. He makes sure that we can tread upon serpents and lions and and they will trample under our feet. 
uh, Jesus said, why are you fearing Satan? I saw him fall like lightning. So deliverance by God also includes revelation of who your deliverer is, who your pursuer has been, and what you have been empowered to move forward um, in the purpose that God has created you to be on the earth at this time, at this season, and in this hour. I almost want to stop and pray a little bit, but let's look some more. Uh, when we are delivered, right? Over in Deuteronomy, it says how the Lord will go with us and fight for us against our enemies to give you and I victory and to save us, okay? But wait patiently upon the Lord. As Psalms 40, 40th chapter says, I waited patiently for the Lord, okay? And he inclined upon me, heard my cry, brought me up out of the pit. I don't know where God delivered you from, but he surely delivered me. Out of the merry clay, set my feet upon a firm foundation, a rock. He's the rock, right? Establish my daily activities. That's what God does. Put a new song in my mouth so I can praise the Lord. Amen. And many shall see it. Fear and trust in the Lord because of your mighty deliverance. So when God delivers us, we become a testimony of his power, of his mercy, his grace, his favor. All of that becomes evident on you and I when the Lord delivers us. And that was the intent that God had with the Israelites as well. He delivered them so everyone could see what a mighty God he is. Amen. In the word of God, it lets us know that um, the God of peace, <laughs> shall bruise Satan under your feet, and that God becomes our hiding place. He preserves us from trouble. So when we're confronted, uh, Jesus didn't pray any longer. He, he just used the word of God. He said, uh, it is written. Remember that? And so it's important that while we are coming out of darkness or we're walking in victory, and we need to maintain a victorious position, we must remember to speak the word of God so that you can maintain the deliverance that God has executed on your behalf. Amen. So in First Timothy, it talks about take the scriptures, put them to memory, use them to wage warfare against the enemy's attacks, no matter what the battle or situation, God will give you victory. So saints of God, what are you fighting? Are you fighting that your children are completely rebellious or your husband or wife ignores you, don't exhibit love towards you, or you're not employed or you have no way to live, or it looks like you're going to be homeless or you're dealing with some insurmountable physical ailment, whatever it is, read the word of God, find scripture that will address that concern and wage war with the scripture of the Most High. Why? Because the word of God in Hebrews is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. See, with God's word, it will help you separate your trial nature. You would separate your physical status, your soulish realm from your spirit, man. And the word of God will empower your spirit so that your spirit can take that word and begin to execute victory against the forces of darkness that is coming against your life. Can you be delivered? The answer is yes, because we have repetitive proof of God's power to deliver. He delivered Noah. If you want to go, go somewhere with this. He delivered eight people from an entire world to start a new world that you and I are generationally tied to. God has proven over and over again that he is the great deliverer. And so I'm saying to you during this Christmas holidays, whatever uh, mental illness or sadness or disappointment, despair, whatever you're experiencing, go into the word of God. 
Ask Holy Spirit to lead and guide you or bring something back to your memory and begin to war against the forces of darkness with the word of God. Over in Ephesians, it says, above all, take the shield of faith. Okay, so what we're going to do, put on the whole armor of God, right? (laughs) The helmet of salvation. So you know that, yes, you are saved, right? The, uh, the, The belt of truth. So you don't allow lies to come into your fruitful area of production. Uh, put on you, the shield of faith, you know, so when doubt is thrown at you, you can protect yourself. Also, the um, the sword, which is the word of God. And, and then we're going to have uh, the full armor on and be prepared to tell others about this great father that will deliver us. Can we escape? Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ came to bring a word to you today and said, yes, we can escape. We, Matter of fact, Jesus has already prepared the way. And then I'm looking at the Galatians, and I want to ask you, saints of God, is this us after having been delivered and have been delivered? You begin to doubt God's power and the authority that he's given to you. Over in Galatians, the third chapter, first verse, it says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Because before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. So this only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the scripture by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? So we can take those words and apply it to ourselves. You know, did you start out believing that God can do anything but fail? But now all your faith is in your medicine, your blood pressure pills, your this kind of pills, the surgeon all kind of things that are not God. Thank God for all of the medical advancements that have been made, but keep your faith rooted in the Father. That's where we have to keep our faith so that we can stay delivered. Amen. Oh, in Colossians, I'm going to end here with Colossians, uh, the third chapter where it lets us know that we are a new creature, right? that we have been raised with Christ. And so what we're to do is seek those things which are above. Why? Because that's where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. We're to set our mind on things above, put not on things on the earth. For we, we have died. We've died from sin. And now our life is hidden with Christ and God. And so when Christ, who is our life, okay, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. So we should not be participating in fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness. That's idolatry. Um, Wrath, anger, malice, blasphemy, filthy language. Get all of that away from you. Don't lie. Put on the new man, okay? Why? Because he's renewed in knowledge according to the image of him, the image of God who created you. And so that's what you and I are to do. We are to believe that God has delivered us. Why? Because we have proof that he's the God that delivers. We have history We have even your own knowledge of the many things that God has delivered you from. So now that you're facing new and unsurmountable changes in this world, uh, they're talking about other viruses and all kinds of things, war, rumors of war, earthquakes, and oh, so much. But no matter what the so much is, remember, you are delivered, you can be delivered, And you can escape. 
I'm going to pray for us right now. Father God in heaven above, Lord, I thank you for today. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to give this word, Lord, that come from you. Lord, I ask you to touch those in radio land, empower us, Lord, strengthen us. Let us know and understand and walk in revelation, Lord, that we have been delivered by this great, by you, great, powerful, awesome creator, God, and that, yes, we can walk in deliverance all the days that we are here on earth and we can pass it on for four generations, generationally, to those that come from our lineage, Lord, for them, too, to walk in deliverance. Father, we bless you today and we thank you for the revelation, knowledge, and understanding of the mystery, Lord, that you, the great God, dwell in us and therefore life, freedom, and wholeness, every good thing dwells in us, Lord. All we have to do is believe and act what you have given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys, and I just want you to know, even though we're in the holiday period, that's great, but remember, you're free, you're delivered, and you can escape anytime you want to, just because freedom is inside of you. Bless others, okay? Love others, and, and share the Word of God, no matter where you are. God bless. Can't wait to see you next week. Happy holidays. Bye.